let's talk about this progressive man in Hollywood, Robert De Niro. Before I get into it, I'm not here to cancel Robert De Niro. These, he can't get canceled, honestly, come on. Um, but just like most of the men in Hollywood that I talk about, this isn't about him being bad or good. It's about him um, being kind of worshipped as this icon, as this like, you know, progressive man and da 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 da, sure, sure. Uh, they also called Hugh Hefner progressive and that video is coming soon. But the way that these men are portrayed is these like super progressive dudes. They rarely are in their personal life when it comes to women. I swear to God, none of them seem to be able to do this in their personal life when it comes to women and children and their families and stuff. <laughs> I'm not saying he's a bad dude, but I just, I just want to show you what a hypocrite this guy is. Like all of them, they're all hypocrites. We, all human beings are hypocrites on some level. I am a walking contradiction a lot of times, but also things are complex, right? I want us to just stop like making it seem like they can do all these things, but like whatever they do to their women and to children in their lives, like whatever, like, bleh. like it's not important. The personal is political, okay? So you can badmouth Trump all you want, but you know, if you're treating your personal assistant uh, terribly, I care more about that than you being like, Trump sucks. Let's get into it though. So this is where I went down the rabbit hole. I saw this tweet. <laughs> so Robert De Niro just got, had this interview done. You know, he's a, a new dad at the ripe young age of 80. And someone was making fun of him saying like, everything that I'm consumed with or worried about just goes away when I look at her. It's wondrous. <laughs> Why couldn't you look at one of your six other children? Because <laughs> seriously, what is this? You're 80. Like you will, this child will be lucky to know you at all. Like, uh, oh God. I also want to say, as somebody who is raised by a single mom, I am not, I will never say that you need a father in the home for a child to be raised around love and to be successful and all that stuff. Never. You will never hear that come out of my mouth because a lot of the women that I know who are the most confident, independent women were also raised by single moms. And I believe that having a dad in the home who sucks is worse, right? Because that woman is going to be forced to center that man if he's not really decentering himself. And so the children are gonna watch that as their example. So one of the best things that ever happened to me is my dad leaving so that I got to see my mom, who was my role model, live her life not centering men. Biggest gift ever. So just want to make sure that that is not misunderstood in this message. This man can have a baby at 80 and, you know, never be a part of this kid's life. I don't care. But I just think the double standard is insane. And nobody's like, most people are like, yeah, whatever. He has a kid at 80. That. If a mother did that. If a mother did that, because mothers are the ones who are expected to sacrifice everything, she would never get away with that. Right? And it's fine that he's just going to die any day because a mom's going to do all the work anyway. But also people who have come into my comments whenever I talk about this being like, yeah, my dad had a child when he was like 60 or 70. And that loss at such a young age was devastating. And I never got over. So, you know, it's not like these dads just dying because they're so old doesn't impact those children. He also loves dogs and has a bunch of those. How much you want to bet he's not taking care of those dogs? Like, men won't even parent their own children. They're probably, he's probably not walking the dog. You know what I mean? Somebody, just like in Gremlins, dad gives the kid a gremlin, a, a gizmo, and the mom is like, oh God, uh, no, she's going to take care of it. And asked about being a dad in his, at, at 80. He's like, it feels great. Great. Everything that I worry about just goes away. Someone on Twitter pointed out that this is like, like he, it, he's probably treating his newborn child like a lot of grandparents treat their grandkids. You know, like gram, some, some of the worst parents are amazing grandparents. Uh, we know why, right? But that's another video. It's just interesting in this article, uh, I think this was AARP, how he can say out loud something and then not connect the dots in his own life. I'm going to show you. So with his new movie, Killers of the Flower Moon, which I still haven't seen yet, but for people who are pissed about Barbie, um, you may actually want to see that as like maybe possibly more feminist than Barbie. I don't know. Anyway, please do not dismiss Lily Gladstone's nomination. 
and all the other women who were snubbed. And how amazing this is, and she's amazing. Um, and also Greta Lee and all the other women who were snubbed um, that were not white. There was a whole lot of white feminism happening, happening last week, and I'll make a video on that later. But when he's talking about Killers of the Flower Moon, you know, he's talking about how American history gets taught, which, uh, how in the education in the United States, you know, how it, American history is taught, which stories are told, who gets to tell the story. And as somebody who was raised in the South and was received the, the, the worst education thanks to a bunch of white women called Daughters of the Confederacy that literally screwed generations of children into learning lies about American history, uh, United States history. Sorry, I don't like to say American because America is a very large place and it's not just the United States. Um, anyway, I had to leave the South to get properly educated because they just lied to me. So I fully believe in this sentiment of like so many people do not know the history of the United States because we're straight up lied to in school. And it's, you know, the whatever that group is called that's doing this now. Forget their name. Whatever. They suck. So, you know, uh, he didn't really know about uh, Black Wall Street, uh, the Tulsa uh, race massacre. He didn't know, you know, and a lot of us didn't know about this until like movies started talking about this, right? Because especially if we're white, these are not our, our ancestors passing these stories down. It's not in books, right? So I agree with what he's saying here. And so in that spirit, I would like to point out a part of his own history that he does not seem to want people to talk about. And that's this right here. Robert! 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 I don't know much about Robert De Niro's personal life other than the fact that he has a ton of children. Um, and is, has no problem having another one at the age of 80, which I think is really selfish. You know, maybe he's a great dad. I kind of doubt it. Most men in Hollywood work so much, uh, and have so much money and power and whatever that they just kind of move on and do whatever they want to do. But that's also like men in general. So anytime I'm talking about these Hollywood men, I want no men follow me. Well, a few of y'all do. And I appreciate you. But whenever I'm talking about these Hollywood celebrities, I'm talking about them because I'm talking about they represent a much bigger problem in general. And this is just how men are. Like, they're extreme cases, but this is how men are. Right? And also, I believe a lot of this goes back to his relationship with his dad. And he's opened up about this and talked about it, and I love men talking about this stuff. I really do. But he seems to not be fully aware of the way that he has exploited a lot of women in his life. And men with daddy issues are usually the worst at exploiting women. Because when dad disappears, and in this case it's really tragic because his dad was gay, right? And so at a time when it was absolutely not ever safe, not, not that it is now, but back then, you know, like, there's a whole st the whole story is very tragic and I'm so glad that he talked about it but it's so funny that I don't ever hear him talking about women being exploited right like so many of these progressive men in Hollywood talk about literally every issue every issue but the one that they are personally doing still in their personal life which is exploiting women's labor which if you're a man who raised under patriarchy you probably are and you don't even know it sometimes. And a lot of times you absolutely know it and just don't care. It's, it takes a lot of work to not exploit women because of the way you're conditioned. But he's never talking about it. And then the one time he got called on it, boy, did he double down and be like, that's not me. <laughs> but then the jury was like, ah, 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 it is you, bro. So I meant to talk about this back in November when this came out. Uh, and then I got distracted and ADHD, blah. So his former personal assistant, Took him to court for a lot of reasons, but basically he forced her into a stereotypical female job, such as washing his sheets and attending to his home, even as she climbed the ranks of his company, right? And guess what? She got a payout. Thank God. But he tried to smear her and make her look bad, and all he did was make himself look stupid in doing so. Bro, just admit it. But I don't think he would because he still doesn't think he did anything wrong. Before I get into that, I worked in the film industry. So I have personal experience with so I, I worked as like not a personal assistant, but I did work as a production assistant and I worked in the film industry in multiple positions. But PAs are the people who do all the things that nobody wants to do. But I actually, I, you know, no personal assistants because in the film industry, you know, you know each other. I would talk to them and I actually ended up 
hanging out with Adam Sandler's personal assistant for a little while because I took them all rafting when I was a raft guide and then he apparently had a crush on me. Blah, blah, blah. That's another story. Remind me to tell you that. But I was like, dang. Like, this is stressful. Like, we had to go take care of his dog, drop matzo ball off at his house. Like, when I started to see that, like, the personal assistants of these uh, actors and stars are kind of like they're... <laughs> They do so much emotional labor, mental load. They're, they're like basically like wives of these men. And they, they never are off the clock. That's the thing. The same thing with their personal drivers. They're never off the clock. They are at the beck and call of these people. So imagine how hard it is to plan a vacation, to go on a date, to do literally anything because, you know, it's like it's like the freelancer world of like never knowing when the work's gonna come. It's kinda like working in the film industry in general. You never know when you're gonna get the call and then boom, you're gone for two months. No one sees you. But to be the personal assistant of these mean, means that's what it is all the time, every day. You could be at your home and they're like, hey, I, I have I can't find my glasses, you know? It's a, like, it's just a perfect storm for the biggest king babies to be born, or they're not born, they already came out this way because they're men in patriarchy, um, but to just be nurtured into like the kingiest of babies. And that's what this it sounds like, that's what this man did to his personal assistant. I would be willing to bet she just wanted to work in the film industry like so many of us. And then, you know, kind of got into this role and then he wouldn't let her out of it, you know? And, and so look at this. So basically things got nasty with his uh, former employee and um, this Canal Productions or whatever. And he, he's all like, God, look, he created this mess himself. He should have just let her go. But he's so petty. He's so petty that he had to try to like, no, she took advantage of being mad. You know, accused her of spending tens of thousands of dollars of company money, food, travel, and other personal charges. Blah! But the jury of seven people came to a unanimous, unanimous decision after listening to all of this mess. They sided with her. Only took five hours and they're like, yep, yep, she, gets, she deserves money for putting up with this mess. And this is the really interesting part. They also found his company liable for her claim of retaliation, which revolved around a dispute between in 2019 between her and his girlfriend. Ta I tell y'all, you can't, I talk about this all the time. These men, will they, they all do it. They pit us against each other, whether it's, you know, side chick against his current partner, personal assistant against his girlfriend or wife. They have, have us fighting each other when they're the problem. They're the ones who want their cake and eat it too. My guess is that he had an inappropriate relationship with Ms. Robinson. And the girlfriend didn't like it. And so instead of being like, hey, uh, boyfriend, I don't like, nope, she goes after the woman. And probably because he lied about a lot of things. And also because under patriarchy, women are taught to not believe other women and see them as our enemy and our competition rather than really bonding with each other. That realizing like we're actually on the same team. <laughs> And it's him who's exploiting both of us. But I talked about that in another video the other day. Anyway, she eventually resigned from the company because it was like so bad. Now he himself was not held responsible. So he is not personally blamed. Like he was exonerated as an individual, but his company and what he did with the company against her, absolutely guilty. And she's getting money. She probably deserves way more money than what she got. That like 1.3 million after like, all these years of dealing with this king baby and her being like the emotional support animal for him. So in more than six hours of explosive testimony, look, he's like, he claimed it's nonsense. And you know, he acknowledged that he could have called her, you know, a bitch or brat, brat. Okay, daddy. Like th the, that word right there is so insulting. God. Oh, I've had to deal with so many men older than me. Bah! Like, um, he also, you know, asked her to scratch his back on more than one occasion. Oh, but that's not inappropriate. It's normal for a woman to just scratch a man's back. God. But, you know, uh, uh, he denies ever any disrespect or lewdness. Okay, brat, 
What do you call that, bro? It's so ridiculous. It is every little thing she's trying to get on me. So ridiculous. It's every little thing she's trying to get on me. Poor little robber. It's like she implies that she's out in front of the building. Scrubbing on her knees. What a stupid merch. Over an eight-day trial, a trove of evidence, including dozens of text messages and emails to and from Mr. De Niro, painted a picture of deteriorating relationship between her, who started in his office in 2008. That's a long time she's been putting up that dude. So in 2018, they were preparing to move into a townhouse on the Upper East Side. If you don't know what that means, that's very, very expensive. All the rich people live. And she was assigned to help set up the rental, a responsibility that she said was like way outside of her job description because he had promoted her to vice president of f production and finance. So why is she helping him move into a townhouse, right? But this is so classic. Classic. Men are like, oh, like, but yeah, you can go get me coffee and like scratch my back, rub my feet, just, you know, decorate my house and all that stuff. And be a god. Oh, they make everyone into their wife and mom. So she understandably grew uh, increasingly unhappy with doing personal take care of people work, including picking out sofa fabric and setting up birthday parties for Mr. Scorsese. Like, bro's got, he's got her, God, he literally, I, I'm gonna make a video on work wives soon. Because I swear to God, these men do this to every woman. And then, and then the women get accused of having inappropriate relationships with these men. But these men force this stuff on us. And you have to have such strong boundaries. Uh, and even if you do have boundaries, you don't want to lose your job. They put us in such hard positions, y'all. She was like, I kept being given these jobs um, and objecting to them. Objecting to wanting to be involved in setting up his home. You do that. Ugh, I love this. You do that with your girlfriend. You do that with your wife. You don't do that with your female VP of production. And so she didn't want to do this, but Robert's like, you got to do this. So then what is it? What happens? She gets in like a war with his girlfriend and basically says that his girlfriend was harassing her. And so cl classic, classic triangulation. His girlfriend, Ms. Chen, is like pissed at this assistant. And you know, she needs to be put in her place. And I swear we all fall for this. This we're all we are all conditioned to be pick me's and cool girls and be like, oh, I'm this the exception. I I I'm the chosen one. We see all these other women as a threat, and we believe these men. We believe them when they're like, I don't know, she's being crazy. When you, I'm I I, can, I guarantee you, this man was playing both of these women, and so you know, then she's having to fight his girlfriend. She was like, uh, she's manipulative and nasty and has the gall to place blame on me for her lies. And he's put her in her place. Everything that she's accusing this, the assistant of is probably what Robert was doing. I swear these men call us manipulative. They're the OG manipulator. So then after the assistant was taken off this project, the girlfriend uh, sent emails to the canal employees in, uh, instructing them to limit their communication with this woman who worked there. The VP of production. So the lawyers of this assistant are saying this was the retaliation was fueled by gender discrimination. Being text messages from Ms. Chen to Mr. Denier accusing Ms. Robbins of, of imagining a fantasy relationship with her boss. No, he's making her his work wife, work mommy, work BFF, work masseuse, work everything. She's not getting paid for. And then, of course, the, 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 his girlfriend's pissed. But it's him. She thought she was your wife. Yeah. Why do you think that is? He made her the wife. God, stop believing these men. God. So the former assistant goes basically for severance pay. Because it sounds like she was basically bullied on some level out of this job. After working, be, being forced into being a work wife of this man. Work mommy. And then look at his response. The balls. The nev. It's about, I hope I'm saying that right. The sense of entitlement. How dare her. Entitled stupid bird. So he claimed that she 
is someone who exploited the trust and generosity. Oh, I love this. This is exactly what Hugh Hefner did. Oh, that video is coming soon. Making all these women think he's so generous and benevolent. No, they exploit you. And then they're like, here, here's some free air miles. Here's some miles. Why don't you take an Uber home? You're tired because working for me, you know, this is how I appreciate you. No, pay her better and stop making her do all this crap. But yeah, she's just, you know, entitled. Uh, how dare her? Uh, you already given her significant perks and gifts. Like a Rolex, a trip to Hawaii. Bro, maybe she wants job security, actual money. What is a personal assistant need with a Rolex? She probably sold it. God, I swear to God, they're so controlling. You know, instead of giving her, like, job security, promotions, real ones that have any meaning, you know, she, she, I swear she probably just literally wants to work in film. And he's like, no, 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 pick out my curtains. Here's a Rolex. You ungrateful man. And he's like, I mean, I paid her $300,000 a year. Uh, in New York, that is not that much. And not when you work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Because I promise you, even on vacation, this man is probably calling her. The, do not ever be a personal assistant to these men. God, you will literally, it's like being in an abusive relationship, but just getting paid to be in one. But the pay is never good enough. I'm not calling him an abuser. I'm just saying these men, a personal, king babies, they will exploit the crap out of you. God. And then pit you against their wives. And then call like both of you jealous. They argued even over that she received, even though she received title changes per her request, her job responsibilities stayed the same. So it's like all she wanted was to, <laughs> she doesn't want to do this. Pick out your curtains, bro. And then he had the, the audacity, like men do, to charge her, like accuse her of uh, financial impropriety. So after her resignation, Canal employees scrutinized her spending. And Robert, being the petty, petty little Marquian, they like tried to go after, like they all went after her for this, saying that she spent way too much money of the company's money on Italian restaurants, uh, you know, a car service home, Uber Eats, you know, uh, and this personal food. Let me tell you something. When you, <laughs> look at him. When you work in the film industry, I used to take the subway home and it added like two extra hours to my day because you get off at the craziest hours. Like I, 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 it, it took me a long time to treat myself to taking, you know, a car home or whatever. Cause they didn't even have Uber back when I was working in the film there. Like, you don't, you're, when you work this much in film and I met, and again, she's this personal assistant. She worked probably more than any crew member, which is crazy. Cause crew members work unbelievably insane long hours. Like she, she doesn't have time to grocery shop, cook, have a social life. You know, she's probably just like trying to feed herself decently. And she sees this rich man living in his, his best life with all this money. And she's literally enabling him to have this career. And she just wants to be like, take an Uber home, bro. Right? That's not, that's not asking so much. But he's like, ah, she's abusing my generosity. Fuck off. But as a lot of other employees said, there's no written policies around this stuff. But Mr. De Niro's like, ah. It's an honor system. It's common sense. Okay, bro. Well, common sense would have your personal assistant doing Uber Eats and taking cars home so that she can show up for you. But she's abusing the system. Okay. So she's like, nothing at charge has been unauthorized. And then her company credit card also reflected charges by and for others at the office. It's not, she wasn't even charging anything for herself. But of course they went after her because they're petty and because his girlfriend doesn't like her because of him. And she said she took Ubers instead of the subway so she could actually receive calls. Up until recently, you couldn't even, you had no signal in the subway. And last time I went to New York, it seems like there's more of it. And, but like, yeah, this man, I can only imagine. You know, I see how many times needy men will call their wives and girlfriends and just blow up their phones all day. Imagine your work husband boss doing this. He's probably texting her like 50, 80 times a day. I would be, I would put money on it. So her taking the subways to benefit you, bro. She said, she testified he once called at 11 p.m. asking for a martini from no. This is what I'm talking about, y'all. This is the stuff these people ask for. And I'm telling you, 
Like the, 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 not all celebrities are like this, but so many of them. She also said that he, he agreed to let her transfer all the company's credit card points to airline miles. Why not? He won't give you job security. He won't pay you what you're worth. The emotional and visible labor, the mental load that you're doing for this man that's not even part of your job. So yeah, if she's smart, man. She's like, at least give me the miles, bro. But he's like, I want her to do it within reason. So 13 hours of testimony. And y'all, going up against someone like Robert De Niro is not easy. Okay? She is not doing, like, there's no telling how hard this was for her to accuse this man. The beloved Robert De Niro. The beloved Robert De Niro. But she said she'd been consumed by stress and anxiety since leaving Canal. And that she had been, uh, had trouble eating, sleeping, getting another job. Sounds like burnout. Now, as somebody who is married to a man who experienced burnout last year, this stuff is real. It is abuse. This is serious stuff. Burnout is real. And I have no, I have no doubt in my mind that this man caused her burnout. I've been so humiliated and embarrassed and I feel so judged. I just, I feel just so damaged in a way. Yeah, because this famous, famous man with so much power and star power and money uh, sent his girlfriend after you. And also is just like, I think Robert De Niro thought he would go into this and win because everybody loves him. I'm so glad he lost. I don't hate him. I think he's an amazing actor. I have nothing against him. But we need to tell the whole story as Robert loves to talk about. Let's tell the stories that are hard to accept. And this is part of you, Robert, part of your story that you seem to not want people to talk about is the way you treat women and you discriminate against uh, this particular woman in the workplace. And she won. That is huge that this woman won, y'all. I hope this sets a precedent. I hope we see more of this. Workplace abuse is real. And, and men who have these work wives, I'm not saying women do not abuse people in the workplace. Y'all know I've talked about this. A lot of women, especially who want to be men at work, are worse than men a lot of times, right? Like we, we will do the work of the patriarchy for them. Proudly, easily, right? We'll throw other women under the bus. But I'm talking about in this particular case, gender discrimination. That company was found guilty and they had to pay. And I would love to see more of this because as someone who knows Hollywood, you are in constant fear of being blacklisted. It's all based on networking and your friends and your reputation. This woman will probably never work in the industry again. So her going up against him in court probably ruined her career in film forever. But what she may have done is set a precedent for other employees, but other of these king babies to maybe have to have their day in court and be humiliated when someone comes with receipts and all the texts of you and the girlfriend you triangulated against her. Bravo, Ms. Robinson. Bravo. And Robert, Robert, Robert. Your next level of this video game calling growing and evolving is to focus on how you exploit women in your personal life. Now that you're just so crazy, you know, girl dad. Okay, now's your chance. You got like probably four years left. Get to work.